says Michael Popak, don't look at your watch. It's time for Legal AF After Dark. The political landscape has changed. There's a surge in favor of Vice President Kamala Harris. How has that impacted the criminal cases and prosecutions remaining against Donald Trump? Are judges looking at that intersection of law and politics when it comes to calendars? We break it all down for you on the most recent episode. Take a listen. Michael Popak, (laughs) what a difference a week makes. I don't know if I could couch this any other differently, but this Trump Vans ticket is absolutely weird. They are unhinged. It is led by a criminal. You have J.D. Vance talking about childless cat ladies being a threat to democracy. You've got Donald Trump giving this unhinged speech last night where he's saying that um, you'll never have to vote again if you vote for him this time. Pathetic stuff, huh? Yeah, look, uh, this is why we um, on Legal AF and on the Midas Touch Network have just kind of tried to keep a firm hand on the tiller as we navigated this political, ever-changing political and legal landscape. The things that you and I were talking about online and offline, about what could happen to the political landscape depending upon President Biden's ultimate decision um, and what, what it would mean and how that would map onto the various pending suits and future suits and future careers of judges like Aileen Cannon. Two weeks ago, we were talking about a potential uh, convention bump, which is the kind of the usual bump that any any, any candidate gets for four days of nonstop wall-to-wall coverage on corporate media of a convention. You always get some sort of bump, 1.2 point, five points or something in the polls, combined with a Butler, Pennsylvania bump for whatever that was. And then what I've referred to on a hot take as a cannon bump, which was uh, right in between the Butler event and the and the convention, um, Judge Cannon going all in with a losing hand on supporting her patron, her patron, uh, Donald Trump, and giving him a win temporarily at Mar-a-Lago with the dismissal of the case by ruling against 50 years of precedent that a special counsel is a figment of our imagination and doesn't exist in the world of constitutional separation of powers where she's wrong. So I'm like, cannon bump, convention bump, uh, uh, you know, and, and you had people then, Ben, it seems like I'm talking about, like you said, like 10 years ago. Do you remember back you know, two Tuesdays ago when people were saying after on the Republican side, after Butler, Pennsylvania, give them, give them the crown. Now we don't even need an election. See that they like not ever having elections. They don't want their people to vote. They don't want us to vote. They want it to just be a Christian theocracy of some sort. No, no, no wall between church and state. And they were saying it's over. It's over. He give him the presidency, meaning Trump now based on what just happened to him and his, whatever he did after he was, uh, when, after he was hit. You and I and others were saying, patience, pump the brakes. This is July. They don't call it a July surprise. They call it an October surprise. The election is not yet here, and we don't know what Joe Joe Biden's doing yet. And let's see... You know, two weeks ago we were thinking: Is there going to be a mini primary? Is are the delegates just going to wrap their arms around Kamala? How is this going to work? And within, you know, for as much crap as the Democrats get for being sort of hand ringers and can't get their act together, and they're going to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory here. Look how quickly they united at, behind Kamala, and look at the polls; they're not tied. The fact that off of three bumps that I just described. They are within a point of each other after a four-day candidacy, five-day candidacy for Kamala Harris tells you one is on the ascend and the other is on the descend, and they're sort of just meeting in the middle in the meantime. Now, this impacts that we're going to talk about piece by piece on this podcast and on all the hot takes and on our future legal layoffs. This impacts the political, the, the legal landscape. The political landscape maps on to the legal landscape. We won't talk about it too much today, but But Judge Cannon thought she was playing a winning hand. It's now a losing hand and by a lot. Same thing with immunity. The arguments raised three weeks ago about the 34 counts in New York seem to have a certain resonance. They no longer have that resonance when it's more likely than not that Kamala Harris is going to be the head of the department, is going to be heading the Department of Justice as the president. And and Supreme Court justices are also mindful of the political calendar and who could be the next president of the United States. All of that 
changed, turned on a dime. And now we're going to break it down on Legal AF. Well, that's where a lot of people uh, are often frustrated at the the diligence and the time it takes, right, for special counsel Jack Smith to make moves or some of these prosecutors, Michael Popak, who you and I admire, they don't make rash decisions. Sometimes they're, they work way slower than I think a lot of people would like, but also it's because they recognize that yeah, sure, there's times where you can win the battle, but ultimately the goal is to win the war. And if you go historically look at wars, there are a lot of times where, you know, the battlefield shifts momentum before there is a kind of a final outcome. And you can't um, you can't act precipitously in these moments. And one of the things you and I have always said, and this kind of trickles down, if you will, pun intended, to the entire MAGA movement. You know, Donald Trump's been a historically horrible decision maker, and he's not a builder. He's a destroyer. He's destroyed companies his entire life. Um, he's been embroiled in all of this kind of litigation. And he's always, because he's such a malignant narcissist, and he's so pathologically sociopathic, that he can't control that in his decision-making tree. There isn't a decision-making tree. It's an impulse. It's a feeling. He thinks he's smarter than experts. And ultimately, that leads him to actually get defrauded by J.D. Vance. I mean, the irony here is that J.D. Vance is a total fraud. His entire life is a fraud. He's somebody who grew up gay. He's pretending to be straight. He then went on and pretended to be a hillbilly. He's not. He's from the suburbs of Cincinnati. He then pretended like his whole shtick, why he got famous was he pretended to be a hillbilly who didn't like Trump. He was the never Trump or hillbilly. And so he went out and he gave these speeches. He started a fraud charity to help the opioid epidemic, but he did nothing he just funneled the funds to his political advisors. Then they told him that he had to be MAGA if he wanted to win. He was always funded by all the big tech bro money. Um, and then they basically negotiated a, like a truce with him and Trump in 2022, where Trump would give a speech in Ohio and Trump would say J.D. Vance and call him the wrong name, J.B. Mandel, kissed my ass. He's an ass kisser. You kiss my ass, right, J.D.? J.D. changed his personality and then became this like right-wing Putin puppet, all these heinous, weird, cringy right-wing talking points that have always existed in that right-wing echo chamber. Like if you go and watch this right-wing stuff, they're always attacking Taylor Swift and the Swifties. They're always talking about this childless cat lady threat to democracy thing is what they is is one of their main go-to lines in that kind of right-wing MAGA media echo chamber. So JD Vance just kind of mimics whatever world he kind of goes into. So then he he infiltrated MAGA, like defrauded them. And now all of like his past stuff, I mean, the guys Googled dolphins and women and sex dolphins, women like this guy's a creepy, weird dude. And then he's, he's calling Jennifer Aniston disgusting. He went on Megyn Kelly and he was asked about his childless cat lady comment in Popak. He apologized to the cats. Well, he, he said, I'm sorry for the cats. I was being sarcastic to the cats. Cats are voters the, too, women. Ben. Yeah. Well, well, listen, yeah, let me let me just talk about J.D. Vance. I'm surprised there's not a conspiracy theory, Ben, that he's a Trojan horse that was developed in a lab by the Democrats. I'm and, looking under the couch for those conspiracy theories, Pope. Well, I mean, everybody in Pennsylvania, there was a conspiracy theory about Joe Biden's involvement. Why are people on the MAGA side saying, J.D. Vance with his with his wife his his hindu indian wife and children and vegetarian and and all of that well, he he must have been concocted by the democrats jd vance shows you and this is what i've said in hot takes so of you 
there's two major decisions that you make as a presidential candidate if you didn't already serve as a president and you have a body of work to be evaluated. One of them is how you run your campaign. How's Donald Trump doing on that? And the second is who you pick as your vice president. Now, I would have thought after Butler, Pennsylvania, whatever happened there, I would have thought he would have taken a breath having had a whatever hit his ear next to his head, next to his brain, and not make an immediate decision about who should be, could under the Republicans, a president of the United States. Because that's what's going to happen. Donald Trump's going to be 80-ish if he ever got elected. And you're really voting on J.D. Vance as president, not vice president. It's always been co-presidencies. You know, Gore, you know, Clinton, Gore, Biden, Obama, uh, uh, Kamala and 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 Biden. It, that it's a package deal, and look at this package, and the fact that he didn't Trump pick somebody that was more qualified, like a governor, somebody who had run anything, somebody that wasn't a fraud and did very little to any due diligence on the guy. The fact that your the Midas Touch Network is able to unearth these things, Kamala Harris's campaign is able to unearth these secret recordings. They're only secret because they were out in 2016 and 2018, and more recently, where he was shilling his book. Was it Shill Billy Elegy? You know, this it isn't hill, this, uh, yeah, hill, 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 right. Billy. This isn't hillbilly elegy. This is hillbilly alchemy. He's converted himself before our very eyes into what he thought would get him elected to ride some sort of coattail for Donald Trump. And in reality, he's the he's the anti-Trump. I liked the JD Vance that had transgender people as friends that married a woman who happened to be of a different faith of his, who raised children that way, uh, who has said all those terrible things about the guy he's now running with. What happened? He look. He's a gay guy who then went anti LGBTQ plus. Who then who went who was like an extremist? He then w- pretended to be a hillbilly. You know, I mean, he's not even from Appalachia, right? Popak, the whole thing is at at every layer is. Front. You, you mentioned the shooting though. Can I want to address this too? Because sure. Donald Trump keeps on talking about this over and over again. Look, it is a serious deal that in Butler, Pennsylvania, there was an assassination attempt. But Donald Trump, why do you then have to like exaggerate it and turn it into something else? It it, it is something that conjured sympathy if you were just normal about it. Like we took it very seriously here. Our reporting was we need to get to the bottom of it, that there should be no place for political violence. We were having that discussion. And then what does Donald Trump do? He immediately, within 24 hours, starts selling fight, fight, fight high tops. He sells the Assassination Edition sneakers for $299. He has 5,000 of them. He autographs 10 random ones. So you're going to make $1.5 million on on the shooting? You can imagine if Jackie O had issued shoes right after Dallas, the Democrats. I mean, the fact that he doesn't even take it seriously and so craps on the presidential position, his the assassination attempt, whatever it was, the fact that he doesn't even honor it. Why should why should we? And his whole thing is he he wants to make everyone know that it was a bullet. It was I got I got hit in the head with a bullet. Okay. Okay. I, I, I mean, look, the bottom line is this is what his ear looks like now. Okay, he wore the he wore the bandage. This is what his ear looks like. Okay. Let me show you the other photo. What's of this the year. AP part? What's that AP part? Oh, no, no that, that was just the Associated Press took that oh, photo. Oh, that was their photo. Um, I got it. Th- th- this is him showing Netanyahu his ear. Okay, there, yeah. There's not even a nick on his ear anymore. Now, look, if you get hit with an AR-15 bullet in the face. From 300 feet away? Ear, from 300 going, feet away? Yeah. yeah. For, it's going to leave a mark, okay? So whether it was shrapnel, a fragment of a bullet, the yeah. glass from nearby. But Donald Trump's whole thing now is attack the FBI director. And Donald Trump was posting yesterday. He was reposting Tucker Carlson saying that Christopher Ray, the FBI director, is a criminal. That was a yeah. post from Donald Trump. Donald Trump appointed Christopher Ray. Christopher Ray is a Republican FBI yeah. director. But and why Donald Trump attacked Christopher Ray? Because Christopher Ray was asked during uh, congressional testimony, yeah. hey, do you know if it was a bullet? Or And Christopher Ray said, look, I, we don't know if it was a bullet or if it was or a shrapnel. fragment or a piece yeah. of a bullet or yeah. shrapnel, 
but something clearly nicked his ear, and it we take it very seriously. Look, look, Trump because he's a criminal. The good thing that came out of it is there is a bipartisan here, uh, as we predicted here on, on Midas Touch Legal AF, there is a bipartisan congressional committee that's going to be almost equally split, one more Republican than Democrat, to evaluate what happened in Butler, Pennsylvania, and make sure it never happens again. I lived through an era when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when, the, when uh, Gerald Ford was hit twice through two separate assassination attempts when I was 12 years old. By the time I was 15 years old, the Pope and Ronald Reagan were hit the same year. So there, there were failings in Butler, Pennsylvania. That could have been Joe Biden standing there. And the kid had, the shooter, uh, had all sorts of stuff on his phone that we've now been able to unlock through the FBI about about um, you know Fawny Willis in Georgia and Joe Biden, he just wanted to go and make a name for himself in his final moment uh, by shooting somebody famous that was running for office. If it wasn't him, it could have been Joe Biden. So yes, the bipartisan blue ribbon panel is going to have to get to the bottom of it. Secret Service heads have already rolled. That's not the FBI issue. There were mistakes made. I'm not a forensic a reconstructionist, but I could tell you that that rooftop should have been part of the perimeter that, that should have been protected. And 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 that is the difference. We're on this network talk, calling out things that are wrong without partisan influence. It was wrong what happened that day. He should not have been, th that kid should not have been able to fire at him at will that way and get off eight rounds. It was wrong. It'll be fixed. We've got to fix it. But for him to use it, as you've said, to shill, to to grift, to try to get, to exploit it beyond necessary. I'll give you one example, Ben, and I'll turn it back. Uh, the Republicans, because I got nothing else to talk about, about Kamala, uh, didn't like the video that she put on her website about uh, Barack and Michelle calling her. And people said, oh, it's so cheesy. That's not, oh, cheesy. It's Gorgonzola, Pier Pierce Morgan said. Oh, uh, you know, that she took a good moment and turned into something. Really? What, what, are, what is their candidate doing who, like you said, had legitimate sympathy that would have attached to him if he had treated it appropriately instead of doing what he's doing, which is trying to call for the hanging and the assassination of a federal officials because he got, because he got hit with something in Pennsylvania? You know, look, when that Kimberly Cheadle, who was the FBI, who was the Secret Service director, testified before Congress, if you go to the hot take that I did right after that, I said that she needed to step down. I said that that was a, it was a horrible testimony that she gave. If you looked at the Democrats who were questioning her as well, they were being very critical of uh, of her you had jamie raskin who chaired the oversight committee called on her to step down because it wasn't a partisan it wasn't a partisan issue she failed and then she doubly failed at that congressional hearing where she couldn't even answer very basic questions and she tried to deflect and do this whole you know well you know we're just looking into it They're like no answer the questions and that was you know again that's that's not partisan one way or another. And the same way when we're calling out Donald Trump for selling $299 assassination edition sneakers, that's not a partisan thing. When Donald Trump goes and gives speeches and says that he doesn't want elections in the future, if you vote for him this time, there won't be elections in the future. That's not partisan. And if you're corporate media and you're not putting that on the front page of your newspaper, and then you want to say that, you know, well, what, well, what, well, both campaigns have issues, both campaigns. No, you're not covering what probably is the most heinous statement ever made by anybody running for office. And you don't even cover it, corporate media. We have to remind people about what's at stake right here. First, what I want to share with you, though, is are the emails that Donald Trump sends to his supporters. Right? There's no policy. There's nothing to it other than hate. You don't believe me? Here's what Donald Trump sends to his supporters. It says, uh, Ben, it's Kamala. This is, it's an emergency message from Trump. And this is what he sends to the people on his listserv. I subscribe so you don't have to. It says, Ben, she's crooked and she just insulted all of MAGA. She hates you because you love America. I don't care how much crooked Kamala raises in dirty liberal cash. I've got the entire force of MAGA 
standing with Donald Trump, and that's all that matters. Then the next email he sends is, Obama is back and he hates Ben. And it goes on to say, Barack Obama doesn't just hate America, he hates Ben. So it's no surprise that he ditched his zombie pet Biden and officially endorsed crooked Kamala. They're even joining forces with Soros money machine, Hollywood elites, and corrupt special interest mega donors just to come after the ultimate target, Ben. But unlike these ultra liberals, Donald J. Trump and J.D. Vance loves you. And just to prove how much you mean to us, we're making you our special guest. And then they show you this kind of creepy picture um, right here of them. But Popak, that's very violent language. That is language that should be nowhere in our political discourse. And that's why I always say this is not Obama Romney, Obama McCain, George W. Bush Kerry, George W. Bush Gore, Clinton Dole, right? Clinton George H.W. Bush, Gore George W. Bush. You go back, this is very different. This is authoritarianism. This is Viktor Orban. This is Vladimir Putin versus a candidate in Kamala Harris that supports democracy and normalcy. The problem, you're exactly right. The problem that they're having is is recalibrating now that they don't have old guy jokes to tell anymore. I, and I mean that um, uh, without, without any pun intended. It, it, um, now they've got a vibrant, dynamic, qualified vice president who constitutionally was prepared to be the president of the United States at any time. And now she's able to carry forward the legacy of the body and, and run on the complete body of work, that compelling body of work of the Biden administration, Biden-Harris administration, take full credit for all the things that she contributed to um, in being kind of the co-president with him. And without the, let's be frank, some of the baggage that Joe Biden had developed mainly because of his age. And so now they don't know what to do. So it used to be, um, don't mail in vote, don't absentee vote, um, don't early register to vote because you, voting can't be trusted. And then it became, no, you have to vote because we won't win if you don't vote, which is a tautology. And now it's, you don't have, just vote one more time. I'm not you, I'm somebody else. I'm not Christian, but you got to vote one more time because then I'll just do all those Christian theocracy things that you wanted me to impose. Just give me one more term and I'll get it done for you. And or I may never leave and that's, this is what they're down to. And, and they, they're down to appealing only to the red meat MAGA base. There is no one else that finds this argument, this closing argument by Donald Trump slash J.D. Vance to be compelling. In fact, quite the opposite. We find it to be dystopic of the American carnage landscape and downright scary. And he's going to, he, if Kamala wasn't going to win, which she is, He's going to scare enough people over to her side. They've been just waiting for a reason to vote Democrat, and now they, we've given it to them. Michael Popak, what does your shirt say? <laughs> you have to stand up. It says, baby daddy. <laughs> and, and Michael Popak, doesn't it feel good, though, knowing as a girl dad that we can have a, our first female president oh, yeah. of the United States and, you know, I, I've shared this. I, I think you may have broke the news um, that, that, that I'm <laughs> that my wife, uh, Sochi, is, we, we are expecting in September. We're having a daughter and um, our, our, our baby girls will be friends. Oh, and yeah. one, of the one of the hardest things for me to try to process and the thing that would keep me up working and, not, and grinding out all these videos, too, is that. I just did not want my daughter growing up in a Trump America where there's okay. someone found liable for sexual assault, a convicted felon, a predator, someone who's on tape bragging about sexually assaulting women, someone who's just weird and deranged, you know, ever being in that office. So the energy right now surrounding well, Vice or, President Kamala Harris is something special. Or, or, or and, and to turn it, and you and I were both built to be girl dads. I mean, I know how long I've known you and you've known me. The, the, and to, and to have those little eyes look up at us in five or 10 years and say, they, when they get to that chapter in the history book, 
and there's the Trump chapter, and they look at you and me and say, what did you do, daddy, to, st- to stop Donald Trump from being reelected? Like, did you, did, you know, what, you know, and we, I want to be able to look them in the eye and say, we did quite a lot, babe, and we were able to accomplish it. Yeah. And that we is all of you, the might is mighty. You know, how about this stat, Michael Popak? In the past 40 hours, the Midas Touch Network has done over 23 million views. That means the Midas Touch YouTube channel was the number one most watched YouTube channel in the entire United States of America in all genres, including news, but all genres. And we beat Fox, MSNBC, CNN, all coverage, and all other genres as well. And that's because the people power this movement and power this network. We were all saying we are frustrated and fed up with corporate media. So guess what you did? Those of you who are listening and watching, you created this network and you built the network that you always wanted. Here it is. I, I want to share like this Obama, with you. It's, it's like Obama. You're the network you've been waiting for. <laughs> you create, you know, look, I, I'm glad that Michael Popak and I can be messengers on this network and share, you know, and talk about these cases. And, and, but we are members of the community, just like all of you, you know, and we're a small part of this community. You're the force that powers this community. Let me show you this clip right here, just so everybody can see what Donald Trump said. This is what Donald Trump said in West Palm Beach. He gave this speech at Turning Points USA. This is the organization led by Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk is the person who says MLK Day should be abolished. He's the one who says that there shouldn't be black pilots. He's the person who had the event in Detroit that handed out the signs and the hats that say white boy summer. He's the person who mocks Taylor Swift over and over again. This is where Donald Trump decided to speak last night, and this is what Donald Trump decided to say. Let's play it. And again, Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years, you know what? It'll be fixed, it'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote. He says in four years, we'll have it fixed so you won't have to go out and vote. I only need your vote this time. Christians, Christians, not other Christians, I need your vote and then he goes, I'm not Christian. I just want to repeat what he just said, that he's going to fix the voting so that there won't be future elections and that you only have to vote this time. And Michael Popak, the fact that that is not leading coverage on any major newspaper, how, how is that not news? Well, okay, hold that, hold, okay, you're right about that. But look, and this is where Trump is going to fail. Biden was successful during 2020 in a, in a COVID era to, to after he survived South Carolina and the Democrats rallied around him, he was able to kind of run from the basement and win an election. That worked in 2020. Today, Donald Trump, who, who does not hold press conferences, I'm not saying candidates have to, but he holds no press conferences where the free press actually pushes him on yesterday, Mr. Trump, you just, to most people, think you just declared that you're going to install a Christian theocracy and do away with voting. How do you respond to that? See, he doesn't have to be challenged by that because he doesn't subject himself to any types of unfriendly environments that would come with like a press conference. The debates forget the last debate. It's like an Etch-A-Sketch. That was Biden versus Trump. Kamala, who he may or may not be debating against, but if he doesn't, that's advantage Kamala Harris. And if he does, that's advantage 
Kamala Harris, because this prosecutor versus felon thematic, which is genius, fits neatly on a bumper sticker and is so accurate and you can use it. You know, it's like a Swiss army knife. You can use it for everything. It's it, You can use it to analyze everything. You can use it to counter everything. And she, if they think that she sometimes gets tongue tied or says things that become memes, wait till they see her in action, no longer the vice president, a presidential candidate proving to the American people that she's qualified to be president, debating, prosecuting, giving closing argument and opening statement, which she's born to do with year. That's all she did. She, she wasn't a she wasn't a community organizer. She wasn't a, a part time senator and, and book writer. She was a career line prosecutor, line prosecutor, state and then and then attorney general. That's all she did, and so. He does not put himself rallies, these stupid comments in front of adoring adulation of people already voting for him. That's the problem. He's not making any new voters on a daily basis. And that's all that Kamala Harris is doing. Welcome back. That was Ben, my Salas and me on uh, Legal AF, the leading podcast, the intersection of law and politics. We pull it all together with lawyers talking about things. They know what they're talking about at that intersection. We do four to five stories uh, every show. We curate for you and we bring it to you the only way we know how, unfiltered, uncensored, um, sometimes unhinged. <laughs> but we sit at that intersection and we bring it to you the only way we know how is practicing trial lawyers. If you know about Legal AF, thank you for being part of our audience. If you If you want to help us, because we don't have a marketing department, take that clip, send it off, help us grow organically, send it to friends and family and people in your life and ask them to join our show and our audience. We're getting close to 3 million full, uh, free subscribers here on the Midas Touch Network and every little bit helps. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I invite you to join us every Wednesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on Legal AF on this video channel for Midas Touch and also on every major audio podcast platform. Just plug in Legal AF. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legalaf. That's patreon.com slash legalaf.